Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be making a, a very cool sort of realistic plane pawn, including some pitch, roll, yaw, and uh, an accurate uh, sort of throttle system. And I've just gone and edited the old biplane model that you might recognize from uh, from my old Toon Shader video. I've just gone and added uh, some bones here to it. We've got our root bone, a bone for the propeller, one for the rudder, and one for each of the elevators at the, the back fins here. Uh, it's all pretty... Well, pretty simple, pretty simple rig. I'll put a link in the description to a place where you can download it. And I've also gone and exported the mannequin so we can put him in the plane as our as our little pilot. Okay, the only thing that we're gonna to need to do to get started is, uh, well, nothing actually. Let's just right click and make a new blueprint class. This will be a pawn because it's a, it's a player and we'll call it uh, biplane, biplane pawn underscore BP. All done. So let's open that up. And I'll snap him up here. Ah, there we go. And let's add some stuff here to get our pawn all set up. So let's just go add component. We want to add our biplane and we don't want to use a skeletal mesh or a static mesh. We want to use a poseable mesh. So we have access to the bones uh, here in the blueprint and we can add rotation and that kind of thing to animate the, uh, the various sort of aspects of our, uh, of our plane. And we're also going to need, uh, because we can't apply physics to a poseable mesh. So we're going to need a static mesh here to be our driver. Uh, we'll call that driver and we're going to drag this onto the scene route here, make it the new route of our uh, biplane and then we'll need our usual pawn stuff like a spring arm to attach our camera to and obviously our camera just like that. So let's grab the driver here, we want to set our static mesh, I use the one meter cube, there we go and our poseable mesh which is going to be our biplane, our biplane rigged. Now obviously, it's not going to be the best thing having this uh, big block here in the middle of uh, in the middle of our plane. So let's set the size down to zero point one, and then grab our poseable mesh and set our size up to ten. So this will hide our little uh, block there just down in the plane where no one can see it. Oh, and uh, we should also let's add another component, add another static mesh, and this one will be our pose. Well, our posed mannequin, who's going to be our our little pilot. All right, all nicely done. So let's grab our spring arm. We'll make some changes here, like uh, set our length out. Uh, we'll go, let's say 800. And we'll also rotate it up a bit, something like 15, 15-ish 15 degrees. Grab our camera and level that out. Something close to, close to zero. And we'll grab our spring arm. And we'll also add some lag here, but not our regular camera lag. We just want the rotation lag. And our rotation lag speed, uh, we'll start with 10, but we can tweak all of these things later on. So let's get our, uh, we've got no collision on the poseable mesh, but our driver, we need to be set as a, in collision presets, we want a physics actor, and we want to simulate physics. Make sure to check this box for simulate physics, make sure the collision is set, and we're ready to start building out our, um, our uh, blueprint. Of course, because it's a player pawn and we have a few extra controllers, let's go to project settings in the editor. This window might take a second or two to load up. And down in input, I've gone and added our uh, roll, uh, our roll action with Q and E. And I've also got throttle up and throttle down. Throttle up is left shift and throttle down is left control. You can add these just by tapping this little plus here on action or axis. And that should be all that, uh, all that you need to do we're going to be piggybacking off the move forward move right uh, already existing uh, access functions there so over here in the biplane what do we have to do first let's make ourselves a variable we'll do the we'll do the throttle first so we'll make a throttle uh, a couple of throttle uh, variables we want a boolean called throttle up hopefully i can spell properly throttle up and another one we'll call it throttle down Throttle down, just like that. Okay, let's go to the event graph. Uh, we'll get rid of all these, we'll start fresh. Let's get our input action. And uh, we want throttle, throttle up. And we want our throttle down. And we're going to set these booleans based on which one of these keys is, is up or down at any particular time. So let's, uh, not control, hold in alt and drag in throttle up and throttle down. And we'll duplicate both of these guys. So with throttle up pressed, we want our throttle up boolean to be true, and when it's released, we'll set it back to false and do the same with throttle down. All right, so far so good. So now, whichever one of these keys is down is going to trigger one of these booleans and uh, affect our throttle. 
So let's make a function for our throttle. So I've got a new function here. Let's call it throttle, throttle input. And then hold in B and click for a branch. We'll need to hold in control and drag in our throttle up. This will be the condition of our first branch. We'll just plug in, plug in here. And we want another branch and throttle down. And this will be the condition of our second one. And we'll plug in the result of our first branch into this second branch. And then uh, we can do more things based on which ones, which ones uh, true or, or false as they, as they appear. And we'll need another variable. We we'll want an integer. This will be our throttle uh, mount. With that done, make sure we set it to an integer. Just, we just want a whole number. And we will drag this guy in just as a get. I uh, will default value this to about 30, something fairly low. We won't be taking off and landing. Uh, I won't be covering that in this video, but we'll add a little bit of throttle amount so we just don't drop out of the sky as soon as we spawn in. And out of this throttle amount, go plus plus, we'll get an increment int. And then minus minus, we want a decrement int. This is just going to uh, add, just add one or subtract one every time uh, these little nodes here are fired. So we'll plug in our plus plus to the result of our true in our first branch and a minus minus as the result of the true in our second branch. And let's also clamp our integer. Oh, something's gone wrong. You know what, let's right click and do it. Clamp integer. We want our minimum value to be zero. Our maximum value is 100, 100% of throttle. And then plug the result of, or at least our uh, integer here out of this increment into the value. Let's duplicate this so that we can use it in our decrement. And then we just set our throttle amount uh, based on the results of our, of our uh, calculation here. So we'll plug in the return value just in there like that. Then the result of our increment into our set and we'll duplicate our set and do the same thing for our decrement. All right, easy enough. And now just so that we can see it on screen, let's get ourselves a print string and print out the result of our throttle. So let's duplicate these two, hook them up, there we go. So if we compile that and save, and then head back to our event graph, we can hook it up uh, to our, our blueprint here. Let's grab a begin play. Uh, begin play, there it is. And instead of going straight off the tick with our uh, throttle input function, it's a lot less costly on overhead if we use a set timer by a function. So it's just gonna execute this once, but replay the same function uh, as frequently as we uh, determine here in time, which we'll set to 0.05. This will be the value, the uh, the speed. So if you're holding in your throttle up key, it's going to uh, fire that function and increase your throttle every 0.05 seconds. If you want it to do it quicker, then you just make the number higher. And then in function name, we type in our function name, which is throttle input. Making sure to get this exactly right, get the exact title of your function, otherwise this won't fire at all. Uh, but that should be all that we need to do. So that's all finished. Uh, what's the next step? Let's, well, we'll do our, uh, our roll and our pitch and yaw. So let's just get our axis events here. Get an axis, uh, an axis, uh, input axis roll. Let's also get our move right. And also our move forward. There we go. And we'll need another variable. Uh, going forward, this one will be our air control. Or really, like how much sort of how much drag is going to be affecting the uh, the the plane? So how much how quickly is it going to be able to turn and roll and that kind of thing? And uh, we'll set this air control value. And we'll compile it first so we can get to the default. Set it to something like twenty five hundred. We'll be multiplying our uh, air control value here by our axis values to uh, which, which which will be one or minus one or some some value in between. So we'll get a multiply here. Float, multiply by float, and then plug this in. So if we have positive in the roll, we'll get this value of 2,500. And if it's negative, it'll be negative 2,500. So uh, we'll grab our driver, drag this in, and we'll get our forward vector, be the forward vector for our roll. The names don't quite uh, line up, but if we reoriented the pawn, uh, we, could, we could make the semantics work out. But as it is, we are just, forward is the positive x, that's pretty pretty common, pretty standard, so we'll just run with that. And then from this forward vector, let's multiply vector by a float, 
multiply our air control or our uh, axis result here by our forward vector and then come out of here into our lap. We'll lap this vector. I might make this the B value. Our alpha here is going to be 0 0.1 and then add torque in degrees. So this is going to be adding our, um, our torque value, our roll. So I'll plug it in, bone name doesn't have to change. We'll check this box for acceleration change. So that you can read the tooltip here. It'll be taken as a change in the angular acceleration instead of physical torque, i.e. it's going to ignore the actual mass of our physics object and just apply the, apply the force. So let's grab all this stuff. We're gonna copy it because we'll be using most of this for our next two axis uh, values. We'll just plug this straight in, but we need to change our forward vector because we're not using the forward vector for our uh, for our move right. That's our uh, vertical rotation around the uh, z axis. And back here, what we need is the forward no the up vector. Sorry, get up vector. And this will be plugged into our multiplier. And just like before, let's grab all these guys, duplicate once more. Well, nothing happened. Come on, duplicate. <laughs> there we go. I don't know why. Sometimes that bugs out. And we'll delete this up vector. The next thing we want is the right vector. So get right vector. And there we go. These are just the directions that a physical object is moving in uh, any, you know, any any particular direct any particular direction, any particular axis that the that the object is operating in. And that should be all that we need to do. So this will handle our basic flight controls. These three. Uh, these three axis values, these calculations here. This is our basic, uh, basic plane physics, our basic plane controls. But we'll get some very sort of highly erratic results if we just leave this as is, because we'll be playing, uh, playing a force infinitely. It's not going to work very well. So let's grab ourselves the event tick, because we will need to do some real time calculations. We're going to need uh, our driver, a little driver mesh. Let's drag off that. Get physics angular velocity in degrees. That's the one that we want. And we want to negate this vector, return it to zero. And uh, let's, yeah, we'll divide this by, vector by float, we'll divide this by 0 0.5. We'll negate the vector down to half of what it was. And then from uh, this event tick, we want to add torque, add torque in degrees to our driver. Plug in our torque here, tick uh, the acceleration change, just like our other uh, torque nodes. And this is our compensation. This is going to uh, compensate for the the angle of the of the uh, of the plane. It's going to return our values back to zero when there's no button pushed, basically. And from here, oh well, we want to grab our driver. We want to make sure if we come down here that enable gravity. We want to untick this box because we're going to be making our own gravity, our own downward force, so that our plane sort of drops out of the sky in a way that makes sense to us because we're not using the actual mass and the the built-in. Um, gravity physics values in Unreal Engine. We're going to do it sort of on our own. So let's come out of our little driver node here. We're going to add force. Hook this up to our chain. Uh, check acceleration change. And the force we're going to add is a negative force in the Z axis. In other words, Z minus, which is downwards. So minus 1500 would be a fairly good, fairly good gravity value. And with that done, let's just hit compile, make sure that we're all set. The next thing we do is want to use our throttle to calculate the speed of uh, speed that our plane is moving. So if we can do that, then we can use our throttle to adjust how quickly it is that we're moving, slow it down, break that kind of thing. And it's fairly similar to how we did it with, uh, with our controls here. We're just gonna make a new function for it though. We're gonna keep it encapsulated. Call this one, uh, where are we? Calculate speed. Cool, now that we're in here, let's grab our driver once more. This is where all of our physics calculations are gonna be applied is on this driver. And we're going to come off here into a get physics, get physics linear velocity. Now oh, it's giving ourselves a little driver node anyway. That's okay. And we won't need to change our bone name just like before. We'll come out of the driver though. We'll get our forward vector, which is going to be the direction forward that we're moving. We want to get our throttle amount. So we'll drag in a get. We want to multiply this throttle amount into a into a value that is that, that makes sense for a physics objects in the world because zero to one hundred that's 
that's not a lot of force whatsoever. But we multiply our throttle amount by 250, we start to get numbers that make a bit more sense. And we'll come out here, or we'll, we'll right click like we did before, so we can find it, clamp our float, get a value in. The minimum is going to be zero, which is going to be no motion, it's going to be stopped. A maximum, something very, very high, 25,000, which is 100 times 250. Should make sense. So let's multiply this vector by our float, result of our clamp, and then lap our current physical velocity with the adjusted throttle amount. So we'll come out of this vector here into a lap. We want to lap this vector. Plug in our two vectors here as A and B, and our alpha value is going to be 0 0.01. We'll make the adjustments pretty quickly. And then out of our uh, linear velocity node here, we're going to set physics linear velocity. Whoop, there we go, set physics linear velocity driver. Our new velocity is the result of our lap. We do not want to add to current and we don't need to put in a bone name. It's going to apply it straight to the object itself. So we'll compile that, head back to our event graph, grab our calculate speed, and this is going to be attached to our event tick uh, tree here. All right, so far so good. It's at this point we can compile and save. We'll head back to the editor, Where's my player start? Somewhere up in the sky, I hope. Yep, there he is. So player starts up in the air. Let's go to world settings. We've got a game mode override. Doesn't matter, it doesn't necessarily matter what that is, but our default pawn class is going to be our biplane pawn underscore BP. So we'll just save all, just to make sure, and hit play. Uh, we're not getting, so we're getting our roll, but we're not getting our, our motion. I wonder why that is. Ah, oh, silly me. We haven't plugged in our axis values. Gosh, oversight. I guess it's because I was duplicating these trees. I just totally forgot to hook that up. Whatever. The compile, save. And there we go. We have our plane motion. And if we hold in shift. Oh, our shift. I don't think our shift is working. We're not getting our print string coming out. So let's. Ah, no. You know what it is? I didn't hit looping on our set timer by function name. So we'll hit uh, compile on that, hit play. And now, yeah, as you can see, as I'm holding in shift, our throttle value is going up and the plane is getting quicker. And then if I hold in control, the plane is going to slow down to the point where it's just going to drop out of the sky. Bye, little plane. Get it? Bye, plane. <laughs> All right, moving on. Well, one thing I noticed is that our spring arm could probably afford to be longer. So let's set this to like a thousand and our lag could probably be a bit greater. Let's just have a quick test here. Yeah, so we're seeing a bit more, a bit more of the spring arm lag, all looking very good. And uh, we're ready to move on to the animation. So we added a poseable mesh in our, uh, in our pawn here instead of a skeletal mesh, because we're not gonna be using an animation blueprint. We're just gonna be affecting bones directly uh, from here within the blueprint. So let's make ourselves a new function. Uh, this will be called prop rudder elevator. Mark the, uh, the, the three things that we're, that we're going to be playing with. And then we can start uh, affecting things uh, here, in, here in the function. So we'll grab our posable mesh, because this is where all the bones are. And let's come off here. We need get bone rotation. Get bone rotation by name. We'll plug this in. The bone name that we want, we double check over here in our skeleton. For the propeller, we want propeller underscore J. So I can copy that name and then paste it directly in here. And we want to change this bone space uh, drop down to component space. So affecting in the component space, not a world space uh, rotation value. And then out of the get bone rotation by name, we want to set bone rotation by name. Set bone dot transform. You know what, I'll just come straight out of our uh, posable mesh here. Set bone rotation by name. There it is. We'll hook that up. The bone name is going to be our propeller underscore J. And our in rotation, if we just split these struct pins, we can get to the X, Y, and Z values directly. We'll come out of the, uh, the X, our roll, our sideways value. We're going to add 20. I think 20 is a good, uh, good figure because we're going to be using another set timer by function name in our event graph. So every time this function ticks, it's going to add 20 to the X rotation of our propeller to give the illusion that our propeller is uh, spinning. We'll also set this back to component space so that everything works out just fine. And we can compile to make sure that it works and then move on. The next thing is the rudder. 
So similarly to before, you know, I might just copy these two nodes because we're going to be using them and our set as well. And what we want is the rudder. We'll do the rudder next. So copy, select the phone name, and I'm going to paste rudder underscore J into each of these nodes. Remember to keep our target hooked up and I'll also connect it to our chain here. And the rudder is going to be affected by our axis value, our move right axis value. So if I right click and go get move right, I'm going to get the axis value that we are inputting uh, from, from here, our uh, left and right. Where are we? Here we go, prop rudder elevator. So with this value, uh, we'll come at it, we'll go to a multiply, uh, float multiply by float. So this is the number of degrees that the rudder is going to be rotating depending on whether we're moving left and right. I think I picked a good value was minus 35. If we want it to be, we want the rudder to turn in the opposite direction that the plane rotates, you know, just so accurate, like a, like a real plane. And then we'll come out of our multiply here into a float interp, float interp two, and we'll get the world delta seconds to act as our delta time. And our current, our current will be where it's at. Our target is going to be the result of this axis value. Our current is the Z value of our, uh, of our current rudder rotation. And then we plug in the result of our interp into the Z rotation of our set bone rotation by name node. And that should all work just fine. So let's go back, we'll hit play. Oh yeah, nothing's happening obviously because I haven't called the function. So over here, let's duplicate this set timer by function name. Plug this in. We want to set the time to something quite a bit lower, 0 0.01. And we want the name of our function. There we go, so compile and save. There we go, we've got some rudder going on. The propeller is spinning. All very good, so far so good. The last thing we want to do is the elevators. The elevators are a little bit trickier because they're not, because uh, they do a different thing. Like we, we, when we tilt the plane up and down, they'll both go up and down, but when we roll, one is going to be up and one is going to be down. So there's a little bit of extra calculation to, keep, to, to get on here, but we can, we can do it pretty simply. So we'll just duplicate these meshes again, not meshes, these nodes, because we're going to be using them uh, for our elevator. We'll just connect this up to our, our tree here and get, let's do the left one first. Might as well go down the list. So we'll paste that in. And what we wanna do is get our roll, get our roll axis value, and we want our move forward axis value. So this is our up and down tilt, uh, our pitch, and the roll is our, uh, well, it's our roll. And there's gonna be a, a, different, a different result for each elevator based on, um, based on the, uh, the axis values that are coming into this function. Before I forget, make sure that your bone names are set properly in all of your nodes. And let's come out of this roll into a multiply, uh, float multiply by float. We'll multiply our roll value by minus 30 and our move forward value by positive 30. This, uh, just like our, our rudder, it's the amount of degrees that they're going to rotate uh, based on the inputs that we present them. Let's add these two values together. So we can combine both of these axis values into the one, uh, the, the one node calculation here. And we also want to clamp, clamp our float because we don't want like a value of plus 30 and a value of plus 30 to equal 60 degrees of rotation for our elevator. It's not going to look good uh, when it's in motion. So with this clamp, uh, we'll clamp it at minus 30 and positive 30. And then get the world delta seconds again. I'll just grab Grab this little node over here because we're going to use another F interp. F interp two. Our current will be the Y value as opposed to the, the Z value that we use for the elevator. That's the upright, the vertical rotation. We want a horizontal rotation. That's the, the pitch of our, of our bone here. The result of our clamp is going to be the target. The time is going to be the world delta seconds and our interp speed will set it something higher like 10. It's going to happen fairly quickly. And the result of this interpolation goes into the y, uh, the y rotation of our elevator. So that's all, that's all good. In fact, let's compile and we'll play just so that we can, yeah, there we go. So our, our left elevator is working just fine. All we need to do now is just duplicate all of these nodes 
hook this guy up and change the elevator underscore L to elevator underscore, <laughs> elevator underscore R for the right hand one. And because it's going to be operating in the opposite sort of way, we have to invert our roll value. The move forward value is going to stay the same because uh, like I mentioned before, no matter what the pitch is, the elevator is going to be behaving in the same way. But for the roll, the values have to be opposite for the left and the right, left and the right fin. So we'll compile that and save it. And we'll just recap here. It's fairly simple, fairly simple node work here. We're just getting bone rotation and then setting our bone rotation by some, uh, some trivial calculation. I know it looks like a lot of nodes, but it isn't a lot of actual calculation. So we'll hit save, then back in the event. Just double check that everything's going quite well. And uh, hit play. There's our rudder. Our rudder now moves left and right. Our elevators go up and down. And they're, <laughs> they're, they're changing and being affected depending on, on which uh, access keys we present them. So set the speed up quite high. This is a lot of fun to play with. I love making fun stuff. I just brought this up on Discord <laughs> uh, a week or so ago. and Yeah, it's just, it's just one of these really fun things that, that I, like to, I like to make and I like to play with. In fact, just this, uh, this biplane I made for the Toon Shader video. Let's go to our world outliner, grab the post-process volume. Find materials, add to, make them both asset references. And then down here in our outliner, under outliner, our content browser, we want the tune shader. Let's get our outliner and our cell shading. And then come back here to our pawn, grab our poseable mesh, and then in details, search for custom depth and tick this render custom depth pass. Now, if we hit play, cell shaded plane, look at that. We can tune shade our biplane. So anyway, that's uh, that's really about all there is to it. It's not that difficult and uh, gives you a good little exercise on how physics works in Unreal Engine. And we can play with a <laughs> play with a very cool little plane. And as a bonus, I have the UE4 mannequin as our pilot. So thanks you guys for for watching this far. Uh, this was lots of fun to make, as I said, and uh, hope to keep making more fun stuff soon. Until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video.